Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Maradian here at the Association of the United States Army's annual meeting and trade show in Washington, D.C. Our coverage here is sponsored by AM General, Elbit Systems of America, General Motors Hydrotech, L3 Technologies, and Leonardo DRS. And we're here with my friend uh, Brad Feldman, who is the CEO of uh, Cubic. Brad, great seeing you again. Good to see you, Vago. How are you? Um, I'm doing uh, great, and uh, I'm sorry about the outcome of the game on uh, on Saturday. Uh, everybody thought Almost that Air Force... the greatest comeback of all history. Almost. And then we let this guy in the end zone. I don't understand that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's that's kind of what happens. But, uh, but we have won 20 commanders in chief more than any other of the service academies. Well, so we are still ahead, Bago. Yes, and uh, and uh, you know this, this season's not over yet, right? Uh, so let me talk to you about something far more important <laughs> than military academy football. Uh, uh, the, um, let's talk about the, the Gator system you That's have uh, behind you. Um, you guys have been working in that space for a long while. Um, there, you know, frequently when you see a disaster relief situation, you find them deployed as we have even in the United States, in Puerto Rico and elsewhere. Talk to us a little bit about the capability. You guys have been focused on developing this market. Um, every year we talk about it, every year you're advancing. Talk to us a little bit about the vital need that that product is, is serving in the market. So the, the Gator product is revolutionary compared to satellite communications. Its key edge is it has a 10 to 1 transportability advantage. So each of those balloons, if you will, in an uninflated state fits in a backpack. So it's great for deployable forces. And fortunately, recently, or unfortunately in the country, we've had disasters. So our team is in those places, is in San Juan as we speak, helping people get communications. We've teamed up with a, a, a cellular company. They're collecting cell signals and we're sending them back calls so people can talk to their loved ones around the world. Um, each one of these shows is an opportunity for you guys to best put the best foot forward, you know, get the Army customer because the whole leadership has been here. Um, what are some of the other things that you guys are highlighting here at the show? So in addition to that, we're highlighting uh, a, a product called Atlas, which is a product that's over there, which allows us to uh, we've shrunk networking and communications capability, and we're able to deliver full motion video to the edge and send that information back uh, back to the United States. And then uh, you also guys have uh, something with the Javelin anti-tank missile as well. So we, in addition to being in communications, we also have a training business. And in the training business, we've developed some what we call geometric pairing solutions. And so that's where we know where we are and we know where the bad guy is and we run a missile sim between those. And so we're creating some revolutionary solutions there as well. So what do you think the advantage there is in terms of what that system can do as opposed to existing training aids today? We can provide realism on the battlefield uh, high, high fidelity for low cost. It turns out that that system that we've developed cost half the cost of one round to fire Javelin for real. So basically, it's you're, you guys are looking at it as, you know, the more of these we fill, everybody gets realistic training and at a break instead of firing a lot of weapons in order to get that kind of training. Absolutely, so we have broken the cost curve at providing simulated solutions that are high fidelity such that we can ensure our nation is ready. Let me ask you also about Gator, at least from a U.S. Army perspective. Um, what's the outlook for that program from a U.S. Army perspective? There are a whole bunch of technologies the Army's investing in. There are a whole bunch of systems that it's acquiring. Talk to us about you know that part of the business that so you're trying to So we're very excited about Gator. It's on a program called Tactical Transport Command Communications, T2C2. We're in the middle of LRIP and we've been going through testing. We anticipate that there'll be a full rate production decision soon, and then the government will buy near a thousand of those. But the thing we're really excited about is that there are other programs that can use this uh, deployable satellite communications. And we've actually used it in tropo scatter communications as well. So my guess is that the government will buy thousands of these. So it's a great acquisition that we did a little bit north of a year ago. We're very excited about it. And, and what are some of the other applications or programs you expect to pursue with the technology? You know, I think uh, what we'll do is we're, we have a, a passion to provide solutions at the edge. 
So I think we'll add uh, further applications uh, to processing full motion video. That's the data product people want nowadays. So anywhere there's deployable forces, uh, they can use this. We've done this mostly with geosynchronous uh, satellites, but as we know, there are other satellite constellations. So we now have a gator that spins and finds the satellite where it is. So I think there are immense applications. And talk to us a little bit about Trobo Scatter and the technology there, because it's not necessarily new, but it is potentially revolutionary. Yeah, so if you think about the Gator and if you think about the Army buying these satellite communications terminals, why wouldn't they buy common stuff? So that way their supply chain is very similar. So the only difference is, is we put the, those transceiver or the Gator balls, if you will, up in the air on pedestals and we use a different transceiver. So if you're the G6 of the Army or a 6 in one of the units, you can have common stuff. Doesn't that make sense? Um, but I was also talking about the technology, about how does the technology unlock uh, the tropo scatter where you're using the troposphere for communications. How does that kind of change the game from your standpoint and get to near satellite communications from a terrestrial platform? So, uh, of course, TROPO is a poor man's SATCOM uh, capability. Some people have talked about the robustness of satellite communications. And so this is going to provide a terrific backup solution for the warfighter. Um, let me ask you about uh, shift to the financial uh, part of things. Um, you, you and I have uh, now spent many, many, many years talking about continuing resolutions, uncertain budget outlook. I think we've had 31 of them. <laughs> Yes, 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 and that's a temporary spending measure. That's not the way business is supposed to be done. And alas, we've gotten quite used to it. So talk to me a little bit. You know, we're, we're in another continuing resolution. There's an expectation of more money, but we don't know what's going to happen. Um, the disaster relief costs are tipping the scales at $40 billion. That's expected to be higher. Um, there are, uh, it looks like fiscal responsibility is a little, little bit eroding in, in the GOP. Uh, so that appears that it will be more deficit spending, so you can do a tax cut and do more or defense spending, but still there is not a lot of clarity on the budget. And as the CEO of a business, uh, especially a company that's got to be agile in a, in a room full of, of titans that when they just struggle, people tend to get stepped on. Talk to us about what that's like for you. You know, on a continuing basis, there was a hope, uh, you and I spoke uh, earlier in the year where you expressed uh, a little bit of optimism that, look, you know, th things, there'll be a little bit more upward, you know, there was always that upward pressure, but there's going to be a little bit more of it now, but that's kind of stalled. Talk to us a little bit about the environment you're in, the challenges it imposes, and how it complicates your strategic planning process as a company that's always trying to invest in order to stay ahead of the, ahead of the game. So the first thing I'd say is we have diversity of revenue streams. So we have a great international business for defense, and we have a great uh, international business for our transportation, collecting fares in major cities. So uh, in some sense, that helps us level it out with uh, having diversity. Having said that, we're hopeful there'll be a budget deal. We're hopeful we won't have continuing resolution going as long as it went last year. And I'm hopeful that there'll be some budget decision uh, that across the aisle that uh, will come up and get rid of these silly spending caps. Um, are there, um, what are your strategic investment focus areas? I always like asking you that to see whether or not there's any change from the last time. But what are the areas that you um, are investing most heavily where you're going to see the greatest return? So we're investing in three areas. The first in our transportation company. We're trying to make the user experience better and better. So instead of having a smart card, you'd be able to go there with a smartphone. You'd be able to understand everything about a city, where to go, based on congestion in the city. So we're, we're making investments there. We're making tremendous investment in C4ISR, but particularly the niche of providing communications on the edge. And then finally, we're making investments in training. We believe that we're, the workforce of the military must be trained, and there's been a lot more emphasis recently on readiness of the force. Um, you know, one of the challenges is everybody's working on these battle command systems. Uh, General Goldfein, uh, particularly talking about multi-domain battle, uh, command and control system. Um, each one of the services is working on it, but there are those who feel that there isn't enough integration among these systems. Is that a concern you have? Is enough being done to make sure that the Army system talks to the Air Force system, that talks to the Navy system? I think it's a big problem. I think the way we budget money, we do it by service, and so there'll have to be an integration function. I think industry can help with that, 
but uh, there will have to be standards written and so forth. I hope that the problems get better going forward. Um, last question. Um, you guys do have a lot of commercial. Um, you guys got a, very, a lot of very, very bright engineers. Um, as, I, as I said, I thought about you guys every single time, whether I'm in London or using my smart trip card here, uh, because that's, that's your guys' technology. But do you get out enough as much as you'd like to see what's available in the commercial world and stay fully on top of all the developments there? Do you feel like you have enough time and you're spending enough time on that to, uh, to identify some of the commercial opportunities that could be particularly important to you guys in the, in the defense side of the business? Well, of course, we have people who run that business for transportation, and they, quite frankly, know less about the defense business. And so they spend a lot of time with customers, spend a lot of time with people in cities, trying to understand what their issues are. Our, our business is largely a city business, and so we spend time with them. Now, in terms of keeping abreast of technology, we're doing some very exciting things with machine learning. One interesting example is we're trying to make algorithms better to know when a bus is going to show up. So we have some data scientists that are collecting data each night about when the bus was supposed to show up and when it does show up, and we're making our algorithms better and better. So it's kind of exciting what we are doing there. Right, thanks very much, we really appreciate it. Always, Always enjoy good. talking to you. Always good to see you.